Hi guys, welcome back to the Mighty Blues. My name is of course Cameron and welcome back today to another video. It is a Thursday, don't usually upload on a Thursday, but I want to bring a little bonus video today. Listen, I want to do a season preview for the entire 2020-2021 season. Now I'm not going to go into too many specifics, I'm not going to look at every game in detail and this isn't the preview to the Tottenham Hotspur game. We'll be live on Friday tomorrow evening 5.15pm with the live game preview to that game. So we're not going to go into any specifics about that game or any other game but I just wanted to talk about the season as a whole obviously talk about the new signings first full season under Carlo Ancelotti and how excited I am for this season and what Everton could potentially look to achieve in this season as well because there's going to be a lot of games you know there's a lot of fixtures that we play in, in quick succession obviously we play Tottenham Hotspur in our first Premier League game of the season on Sunday afternoon we then play Salford City in the Carabao Cup second round on Wednesday. We then play West Brom the following Saturday. So we've got a lot of fixtures in such a short period of time. So before before the season starts, a couple of days before, we'd sit down and we'll look at it sort of, you know, as a whole and we'll determine how excited we are as a whole and, and you know, specifically myself in talking about the season um, because there's going to be a lot of games, like I said. We're not going to go into any specifics about the Tottenham game. That will be in tomorrow's live stream. But for me, this is the most excited I've been for an Everton season in a long, long, long time. Now, usually, obviously, there's... <clears throat> a lot of excitement around seasons and especially at the start of them and especially with new managers coming in as well and we've had a lot of that in recent years we had it when Roberto Martinez took over from David Moyes we had it when Ronald Koeman come in obviously with Roberto Martinez it was it's the new era it's a you know a different manager first manager we've had in 15 years that hasn't been David Moyes it's a completely new era we brought in the likes of Romelu Lukaku Gareth Barry James McCarthy all in that summer transfer window we made a lot of signs we spent a lot of money then obviously we had Ronald Koeman it was the first time we sort of thought we're right okay this is a manager who, who has been there as a player, won it all as a player, scored hundreds of goals for you know as, as a centre-back, which are fantastic achievements, obviously played for some of the best sides in world football and being there, but that didn't quite work out. We had it with Marco Silva, where we thought, OK, he's an up-and-coming manager. He's somebody that has shown that tactically, you know, at the, at times he can, he can you know, set up a team uh, team well. However, he hasn't necessarily had the, the sources and the, and the finances to do that on a, on a higher scale. Obviously, that didn't work out, but now this is the first sort of season where we're actually sitting back going right okay Everton Football Club are going into a season with one of the best managers in world football managing Everton Football Club and that's not one of the best managers in world football because <clears throat> He had a great career as a player. That's not one of the best managers in world football because 10 or 15 years ago, he won uh, a couple of trophies. Carlo Ancelotti is a three-time Champions League winner. He's won four out of the five uh, top five European um, leagues, the La Liga, French League, German League, Premier League. The only one he hasn't won, I believe, is the Spanish League. If I get that right, won a Champions League at Real Madrid when he was there anyway. Um he is one of the best managers in world football currently at the moment and has been for a very, very long time. So there's a lot of optimism going into this season. Obviously, it's the first full season under Carlo Ancelotti. Carlo took over in December and managed the final sort of, I'd like to say six months of the season. It should have only been three months of the season, but obviously we had the whole suspension of football and lockdown, etc., which we've done quite well in, in the time that Carlo Ancelotti had. The Everton side, I think on the form table, we were something like 6th or 7th in the form table since he joined us. Got some really, really good results. Also, you know, had some quite poor results and some quite poor performances. But again, you know, they were never Carlo Ancelotti's players. He'd never had the opportunity to strengthen the squad. He'd never had the opportunity to properly... Um, you know, employ his tactics and employ his style of play because it was on players that he hadn't brought into the football club and on players that he hadn't signed. And um, whereas now this is the first, you know, full season of going into it with Carlo Ancelotti as Everton manager from the first opening game of the season. He's brought in three players or four players so far. Three of them who will be Premier League starters. Often, obviously, uh, Alan who come in first, then James Rodriguez and Abdoulaye Decore more recently. Um, so there is a lot of optimism going into this season. There's definitely a lot of optimism. There's definitely a lot of excitement and, and rightly so. Like I said, this is the first time in a long, long time where Everton fans can, can sit back and look at a Premier League season and go, well, we're going Going in with a top class manager, we have massively improved our side, which was absolutely detrimental, by the way, in this in this transfer window that we massively improved the key areas that we were lacking in so heavily last season, and we've done that so far. And um, we can be confident going into this season. We played Tottenham Hotspur opening game of the season, and when the fixtures were first announced four or five weeks ago, and um, there was a lot of Evertonians that were sort of like, it's not the easiest game, it's a tough game. We don't necessarily notoriously do well away at Tottenham Hotspur. It's a game, obviously, against one of the big 
big top six, whatever you want to call them. So it'll be a tough fixture, and it still will be a tough fixture on Sunday. But Everton have strengthened that much that I think a lot of Evertonians are going into this game confident. And I actually cannot wait for the start of the Premier League season. And we always get to this point, don't we, before the season, whether it be a week, couple of days before, where we're really, really excited and we can't wait to see Everton back. But I honestly think that we could start the season very, very positively on Sunday. And I think we, you know, we can definitely go out there and get the three points. And that, again, is... is um, that again is, is feeling excitement of course and the excitement is coming from the fact that we genuinely have a world class manager a proven winner and a, a manager that knows how to win a manager that knows how to out tactic a lot of other managers in world football and a manager that's looked at the current squad seen the issues in it seen the holes in it and gone out and actively bought players in the transfer market to fill those holes and to fill those positions you know Everton are going into the a Premier League season with James Rodriguez as our playmaker you know we're going in with Carlo Ancelotti as the manager with significantly improved the centre of the midfield with Alan and Abdoulaye Decore. All three players coming in, by the way, and all three players talking about how excited they are to be at the football club and how they've desperately wanted to join Everton and desperately wanted to play under Carlo Ancelotti. Um, so there's a lot of positivity going into this season, and rightly so, and I think there's a lot of optimism going into this season as well. And that optimism is, is fielded... Um, sorry, that optimism is, is, is brought in because of the past that Carlo Ancelotti has had. And because you look at Carlo Ancelotti as a manager, you look at Carlo Ancelotti's uh, CV, you look at the trophies that he's won, and you sit there and you go, well, we've got all of this optimism because he's been there, he's done it, he's won this trophy, he's turned that game around, he's shown that he can bring players in, bring players on, he's shown that the players that he signed to the football club in Alan and James Rodriguez's case, they have performed exceptionally under his management. So where as usual, you might be going into a season with the optimism of, right, okay, it's a fresh start in Roberto Martinez's case, which we had a fantastic first season, by the way, but that's a little bit beyond the point. Or, right, okay, well, Ronald Koeman was a fantastic manager, so we'll be able to implement these different coaching styles. Or, well, Marco Silva's a young manager, so there's that. There was always that optimism, but there was never that sort of certainty and there's not any certainty going into this season of course there's never any certainty in, in football going into a Premier League season but there's certainly more reason to be optimistic and you know there's more logic behind being optimistic going into this season because you look at it on paper and you think well we've got one of the best managers in world football we've strengthened our midfield massively considering how we desperately desperately needed to so we should be optimistic going into this season um so obviously, like I said, the, th the three first team signings that Carlo Ancelotti has made to the team so far. Now, he's brought in Nazi and Konku, who, of course, has played in the pre-season friendlies against Blackpool and Preston and played really, really well in those games, to be, pair to, you know, to be fair to him. Um, Carlo Ancelotti spoke today at the pre-game press conference ahead of Sunday's game. He spoke with James Rodriguez and he spoke about Nazi and Konku and he said that he's a very good young player. He's not ready for first team football yet or he's not ready to, to, to you know, he's got no Premier League experience. But he's done really, really well in the in the friendly games. He actually said Nkunku is really young. He has no experience at this level, but he has shown good quality. He's a fantastic physical player, which obviously is really, really good to hear. Um, but a, a, again, you know, the, the three key players really that we knew were going to come in and, and make an impact on the first team, and that is obviously Alan James Rodriguez and Abdelhai Decore. Uh, Carlo Ancelotti had this pre game press conference today, like I mentioned, and he spoke about how excited he is at bringing those players in. He spoke about how those three players were the three main priorities for Everton Football Club going into this summer, and he thinks the club have done an absolutely fantastic job to bring all three players in. And, and again, that is creating optimism within the fan base. Is that Everton fans listen, you know. At the end of last season, even before the last nine games of the season when football returned towards the start of the season, for a long time now, Everton fans have known the holes in the side. Everton fans have known that the midfield is a massive, massive issue for a long, long time. Now, it's no secret, it's no surprise. So, to see Everton actively go out in the transfer window and bring in a player with the tenacity of Allen who's going to sit in that midfield and who isn't afraid to throw himself about and who isn't afraid to put a tackle in and who isn't afraid to get himself hurt, that's exactly what we have been lacking. Regardless of under Marco Silva, regardless Regardless of under Roberto Martinez, that is what we have been lacking since David Moyes' days. We have not had a player who sits in that midfield and who just isn't asked about getting himself hit. He will give 150% week in, week out, but he's a, he's, you know, he's, a, he's a player that brings that physicality, he brings that aggression, he brings that intensity. We haven't had anybody like that in the team for a long, long time. Carlo Ancelotti has looked at this side and thought, right, we need exactly that. And I know a man who we've managed before, who is, you know, we've got a good relationship with, who could come in and do that job. We brought 
Martin Allen. He looked at the team and thought, right, okay, this hasn't got enough big names in it. This hasn't got enough players that create opportunities. This hasn't got enough playmakers. This team hasn't got enough players that feed the strikers, that give opportunities to the strikers. We bring in James Rodriguez, a massive name, marketing-wise. I've already spoken about the James deal. Marketing-wise, an absolutely massive name for the football club, but also on the pitch, massively, massively improves us, comes in, and, and all of a sudden is a player that, uh, you know, statistically is creating more chances than any midfielder at Everton Football Club. In fact, he creates more chances on his own than any of the midfield put together. He then looked at Adelaide Decore, he thought, you know what, we need a player with Premier League experience who's going to come in, who's going to physically dominate the midfield, who is good with the ball at his feet. He isn't just a tackler, he doesn't just get about the pitch, he isn't just going to cover every blade of grass but then when he gets the ball he isn't very good at it he does all of that work but when he gets the ball he is technically good as well he can spray the passes he can run 40 yards and fire one into the top you know uh, into the roof of the net he can play a brilliant pass to create an assist for one of the strikers Carlo Ancelotti and Everton this summer have looked at the issues that we have in the squad and they've brought players in to fix those issues now don't get me wrong there's still positions that we could work on there's still you know full back position right back specifically winger you know potentially even goalkeeper depending on how uh, Jordan Pickford performs this season this, we're, we're, we're by no means the perfect side this is by no means the, the side that you look at and go right okay this is the perfect team for us to go and challenge for top four or challenge for top six whatever it may be but it is significantly significantly better than it was last season and it is massively massively improved and Carlo Ancelotti said that Carlo Ancelotti said in his pre-game press conference today we've improved the squad we've brought these three players in with the, the priority this summer and in doing that that has significantly improved the squad and again that is just feeding more and more confidence into the fan base from the outside looking into to this new season. Um, of course, a little bit of injury news going into the the Tottenham game. It's, it's not too specific to the Tottenham game, but we knew, obviously, Mason Holgate going down injured in the game against Blackpool. We sort of feared at that time whether... Um, sorry, not Blackpool, against Preston. We sort of feared at that time whether that would be, uh, you know, serious or whether he'd just be able to shake it off and move on. It turns out that he will be out for Sunday's game. So, all of a sudden, we're starting the Premier League season on a back foot. Uh, Andre Gomez and Yeri Mina are believed to be fit. Fabian Delph is due to have a late fitness test, but let's be honest, the Fabian Delph injury doesn't really make any difference to the team whatsoever, considering the three players that we've just brought in um but the the Mason Holgate situation isn't ideal of course and it does have a knock-on effect on the, the you know the first few games of the season an absolutely fantastic centre-back really really come on last season on Duncan Ferguson and Carlo Ancelotti improved themselves probably to be our best centre-back I think we could all agree with that our best and most consistent centre-back um last season Yes, it's not ideal that he's out injured. Yes, it's not ideal that he's going to spend some time on the touchline. Hopefully, he can regain fitness and regain match fitness fairly quickly and shake the injury off. However, we're just going to have to deal with that. That's something that we're going to have to deal with going into the season again. Injuries are, uh, and another thing that Everton has struck with consistently throughout a, a Premier League season, so I'm not surprised, to be perfectly honest with you, that we're going into the season with one of our key players being out injured. But again... It gives a fantastic opportunity for either Carlo Ancelotti to go out and purchase another centre-back in the transfer window. We've been linked with Fakayo Tamore from Chelsea, a young uh, centre-half who will be coming in on a loan deal. We don't know how uh, far that is ahead. There's some talks today from Frank Lampard that he hasn't actually been a part of those talks and that uh, he still sees Tamore in contention for their first Premier League game at the weekend against Brighton. Um, there was all the rumours today to state that Fakayo Tamore's deal with Everton could be a little bit difficult because Frank Lampard still potentially sees him as a, a as a squad player for next season so we'll have to see how that one uh, obviously progresses in the next couple of weeks or so but one thing is clear is that Everton are actively in the transfer market for another centre-back and Tomori isn't the only option um, so you know and again I, I assume that is because Everton are looking to either loan out Lewis Gibson loan out Jared Branthwaite and then have four set, four main centre-backs Mason Holgate Yeri Mina Michael Keane and then the, the new um, centre-back whoever that may be but for the time being you know, with Sunday on the horizon and Mason Holgate being out injured and it's looking like we're not going to get another centre-half in before Sunday. You've got Michael Keane and Yeri Mina there who are both fit, who will both start that game. And then Jared Branthwaite on the bench and potentially even Lewis Gibson on the bench if you needed another name. Both for me, more so Jared Branthwaite because we've seen him in the Premier League, but both for me are capable of stepping into a Premier League side and, and performing definitely Jared Branthwaite because we've seen it towards the back end of last season. Um, but like I said, overall, I, I, I want to I, I finish the video because I don't want it to be too long, but it's that optimism that Carlo Ancelotti has brought. It really, really is the Carlo factor going into to this new season. And we've seen the Carlo factor so many times over the last nine months. Since you come into Everton Football Club, we've seen the team turn their performances round. We've seen players coming out and speaking about how fantastic he is as a manager. We've seen the signings, the full Carlo effect in in full swing. Would Alan have come to Everton Football Club without Carlo Ancelotti? 
no. Would James Rodriguez have come to Everton Football Club without Carlo Ancelotti? Absolutely not. Everton released uh, some figures or, or believed to uh, have um, thought that the James Rodriguez um, PR sort of um, situation across the last couple of days or so where we had the, the billboards in Times Square, where we had the building in Columbia lit up blue um, with all of the, the, the barge going across the coast of Miami. Everton believed that that reached in excess of 400 million people. 400 million people have seen that announcement of James Rodriguez being an Everton player. Would that have happened without Carlo Ancelotti? Absolutely not. Even after like the core day, we were linked with prior to Carlo Ancelotti coming in. You know, we couldn't get that deal done 18 months ago. We couldn't get that deal done two, 12 months ago in last summer transfer window. Carlo Ancelotti comes in and it's done. It's bish, bash, bosh. It's sorted. It's there. It, it didn't seem like there was any issues with that deal, whereas 12 months ago, it seemed very, very complicated. Um, so, you know, the, the Carl, uh, Carlo Ancelotti and the effect that he has on this team and the fan base is absolutely massive. And, and I think we're all very, very excited going into the season. Usually there's there's a lot of optimism, but there's an air of concern as well going into a Premier League season, especially with Evertonians, because we either usually don't bring in experienced players in the transfer window or, you know, the manager's job's still in contention or we, we're not quite sold on whether the manager can do a perfect job or with sort of thinking, right, OK, well, he's had a good season, but let's give him another season, let's give him a bit more time. Whereas now we're going into this season with one of the best managers in world football and a manager that's been there, done it and won it all on, on, on every grand stage and, and I think it's absolutely fantastic and I, I cannot wait for Sunday. So there you go, just wanted to do a little season preview, overall preview of the of the upcoming season, talk a little bit about the transfers and the effects that those uh, players have on Everton Football Club um, and Carlo Ancelotti as well because let's be honest, the biggest signing that Everton have made in, any, in recent years, uh, probably in my lifetime to be honest with you, is Carlo Ancelotti because you know he, he has got a ma he's had a massive massive effect on Everton Football Club and a massive massive effect on the players that we are bringing in. One more thing before we go, a little bit of breaking news that it broke about an hour ago. Everton have resubmitted their or sorry Everton have submitted their amended planning application to Liverpool City Centre for Bramley Moor Dock Stadium. The club have responded to feedback from heritage bodies. Historical England are still asking for the scheme to be called in by central government. Liverpool City Council are expected to determine new plans in December and the club are hoping that construction work can begin in early 2021. So there's a little bit of an update on the stadium situation as well which of course is very very positive going into the new season. Uh, very very positive for the future of the football club as well and um, we knew that there was changes to the stadium we spoke about them a couple of weeks ago on the channel we showed the the images of the of uh, what the stadium is going to look like now obviously after the feedback um, <clears throat> and Evan have submitted that uh, ex uh, that um, Sorry, that changed that uh, plan application for the, the changes. So hopefully we'll hear a little bit more about that in the next coming weeks and months. But there you go. Like I said, I just wanted to give a little bit of a season preview as a whole, talking about the optimism going into the season and why fans are excited and why fans are optimistic and why we should be rightly optimistic as well. We will have the game preview to the Spurs game out tomorrow. That will be live at 5.15pm. I'll be joined by Tom T. Logic for that one. So don't forget to join us for that one. This isn't the Spurs preview, like I mentioned. This is just an overall sort of outside. Not an outside because it's an Evertonians fan but you know what I mean looking in at the, at the entire season rather than a specific game we will be doing the Spurs preview looking at that specific game giving my predicted start 11s giving my uh, score predictions as well as well as Tom's that will be tomorrow 5.15pm live on the channel so don't forget to join us for that one big big thanks for watching if you have enjoyed please do hit that like button really really do appreciate all the support the support has been magnificent recently so big big thanks to everybody for watching and subscribing and, uh, and leaving likes let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below and I'll get involved with as many of them as possible um like I said, don't forget to join us tomorrow live from 5.15pm for that game preview to the Spurs game. Big, big thanks for watching. Up the toffees. Let's have, a, let's have a proper good season this season with one of the best managers in world football signing some absolutely quality players. The optimism is at an all-time high for Evertonians and it absolutely should be as well. Big, big thanks for watching. Leave a like if you've enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And we'll see you soon on the Mighty Blues.